this class we were talking about types of classful addressing and classless addressing and then we try to understand what do you mean by dynamic host configuration protocol and how do we get an ip address dynamically configured to system then we give a brief introduction about how a hierarchical addressing of happens so we discussed about a local isp purchasing ips in bulk and then trying to split to different organization so we have taken an example in which a comp a local isp has got an ip address with the 200.23.16.0 has purchased total ips of 2 power 12 since the subnet id length is 20 total 2 power host id is available of 2 power 12 and then it try to divide among eight sub organizations now let me tell you the eight or organizations have different addresses like starting address with 16.0 up to it will have 17.255 next second organization will have this will be having an address up to 17.255 the second organization will have an address 200.23. 18.0 then it will have up to 19.255 so each of this organization is provided with 2 power 9 which is equal to 512 addresses right now so i be i this local isp which has purchased can make an adjustment that you can send the data to any of this ips or the devices connected to that ips by first sending the data to it and then it will be forwarding the required data to the concert ip so send me anything with address beginning with 200.23.16.0 means here once it receives with that particular ip address then it will be forwarding it to the remaining devices in the network okay so it's a fly by night isp where it can uh, travel the uh, any path we have the second kind which is called isps are used where we will have a more specific route to the particular organizations if you are mentioning a particular here you are specifying that the particular organization with an uh, starting ip address of 200.23.18.0 of the 23 up to 200.23.19.255 for this particular organization they have to be more specific to route to that particular organizations okay fine so he this mechanism where we are trying to divide the total available ip addresses into further smaller parts so that there will be a minimization of wastage of ip addresses that we are referring to as hierarchical addressing right so basically to get ip addresses for an internet service provider who is the organization actually assigns this ip addresses now the globally we have an organization called ican which is internet corporation of for assigned names and numbers everyone please remember this name this is a very important terminology the organization which is responsible for the assignment of the So my names as well as IP address is ICANN, Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It allocates the addresses. Then this organization also manages the DNS. Then it assigns domain names and also try to resolve the dispute. For instance, one organization is already is using one DNS. If someone try to duplicate that same one, then it can approach and try to get the issue sorted, or it can get the right on that particular domain name service all these services are provided by an organization called ican we have the next very important topic called as network address translation 
though we were talking about address aggregation or we were talking about the dynamic host configuration is still one particular drawback in case of ipv addressing is the total number of addresses available with ipv4 is limited to 2 power 32 so now with the growing demands for the internet and ip addresses this 2 power 32 will not be sufficient but still with this available if we have to use the better utilization of the ip addresses or sometimes it's a universal logic address but still we want to make it effective utilization then we go for a concept called network address translation now what does this network address translation means here you could find a company having four different devices connected using an internet facility so what you can do is for these four devices you can try to assign an ip address individually but that ip address is only for local usage means it is only for their internal usage this ip addresses will not be used for the external communication so those addresses which are only used for internal communication and will not be shared with the external world those kind of addresses we call it as private ip and those private ips are only used with local networks but coming to the external world for all these four devices we are going to use only one address which is called as a global public ip which is used for the global communication so for the rest of the world if they have to communicate with any of this four three device and then the one router they have to use a single ip address called 138.76.29.7 and the communication reaches to this particular router with an ip address someone wants to send me a message they have to send to my address 138.76.29.7 because the remaining four addresses are not known to the external world again this network address translation router will receive that particular data and try to identify to whom that particular data has been intended and try to forward it to the respective device. So here we have a public IP which is going to be converted to private IP. Similarly, one of these devices inside the local network would try to communicate to the external world. So though they try to send a message here at this particular network address translation router their ip address will be converted to their global public ip address and then it will be forwarded to the respective destination so the destination never knew about this particular ip address all that they know is only about the public ip so all the datagrams living the local network have a single network address translation ip address 138.76.29.7 but each of the device will be having different source port numbers. So along with the IP address, they will try to mention the port numbers. Now datagrams with source or destination in this network have, now this is the subnet mask address where you could find the four devices having host IDs one, two, three, four. But when you talk about the subnet mask of this all the host ID bits should be made zero then it becomes 10.0.0.0 and what is the length of the subnet mask here 24 okay so a network address translation is a process of changing from a public IP to a private IP or private IP to public IP the private IP is used for the local internal communication and that IP addresses in the external world may be assigned to some other device. So we can have a reuse of IPs, but that particular IP set will not be used for two devices in the external world. Those IP sets only can be used for the internal communication. So here, what we are having is for the global communication, we have only one IP address, but internally we will have more than one IP address, which is called private IP. So here we have a conversion between public to private IP and you are receiving the data when you are trying to send the data the private IP is going to be converted to public IP this process is called the network address translation what is the motivation behind 
to use this network address translation is the local network uses just one IP address as far as outside world concerned. As an outside world, I am going to have only one IP address, but internally I will have more than one IP address. Okay. So we need not to have a range of addresses which is required. This one IP address is used by all the devices. You can change the address of the device in the local network without notifying the external world. Previously I was using 10.0.0.1. Now I may use some other address, but it doesn't need to be communicated to the external world. And can I actually change an ISP, which is an outside public IP, without changing the address of device in the local network? Devices inside the local network not explicitly addressable by the or known to the outside world. So this is helping in maintaining the security. So network address translation is giving me a number of advantages beyond saving me the IP address. Okay. Let us look at the same example which we were discussing. The first here a host 10.0.0.1 sends a datagram to a destination with a destination with an IP address 128.119.40.186 and a port number 80. This is the destination number to which it would like to send the data but it will first forward the data to the network address translating router now network address translation router what you could find out is the address which is used as a public ip is 138.76.29.7 the port number we are trying to mention was 5001 okay so not only we are changing the private to public IP, we are also configuring the corresponding port number and trying to send it to the required destination. So the required destination was 128.119.40.186,18. Now once this datagram is registered by the receiver, then it will try to reply. And here, remember, it is not going to reply to the actual host, but it is going to reply to this particular source feeling that it is the device which has actually sent the data. So here the source will be 128.119.40.186,80 and the destination will be 138.76.29.7.5000. Again, once this datagram is received by the network address translation router, it will find that this communication has to be sent to 10.0.0.1 with a port number 3345 so now here so this will be the source who has actually sent the data and the destination is 10.0.0.1 3345 so the network address translation router changes the datagram destination address from its public ip to the private ip along with its port number so this is a simple but a very important concept called network address translation which is actually helping us to improve the efficiency of available IP addresses at the same time would also help us in multiple purposes particularly since you have a shortage of total address available in IPv4 okay so with this what you could do when you implement network address translation is for a 16-bit port number field 60,000 simultaneous connections with a single LAN side address. So address shortage, but still it's only a temporary solution. For a long-term solution, we have to replace IPv4 with IPv6. Okay, right. Next topic which we would like to discuss is called Internet Control Message Protocol. If we remember in TCP IP model, so in the network layer, the different set of protocols which we use along with internet protocol we have icmp igmp arp and rarp so let us look at first the next important protocol network layer called internet control message protocol now this is a protocol basically you inform or update the errors generated during the transmission or to determine whether we have our device is connected to the network or not. 
So first important job used by the ICMP is for error reporting, like whether the destination to whom we are trying to send is reachable or not. The network to which you are trying to send is reachable or not, or there is any error in the address. At the same time, if you are trying to connect to a network, are we reconnected to the network or not? Are we receiving the packets or not? That will be identified by a core request and reply by using a command called ping command. Okay. So ICMP is used by host and routers to communicate network level information. And generally what happens is the ICMP sends the data to the IP and the datagram in which it will carry the carry forward that particular information. So ICMP messages are generally carried in the IP data. What does this ICMP Internet Control Message Protocol information consists of? As I mentioned, it is all about error reporting and finding out whether we have been part of the network or not. So generally the ICMP message which is carried by IP datagram consists of type of the error, the code and the first eight bytes of datagram causing the error. So these are the generally the descriptions indicating what type of errors have been generated. What are the common errors that have been communicated by the ICMP? If you find the type value is zero and code is zero, it means echo reply. Then we have if type value is eight and the code or what we say the code value is zero, it means an echo request. Both of them are associated with a command called ping. So I would just like to show you what exactly the ping ends in coming slide after explaining about the different types of messages. Similarly, we have the different types of ICMP messages like destination network unreachable in the network to which you are trying to reach is not able to be reached. The host to whom you are trying to reach is not reachable. You have the code as 3 comma 1. The protocol to which you are trying to transmit is having an error or the destination port is unreachable. Port number which you have mentioned. It may be an error with the protocol number which mentioned. Or totally the host is not the network may not be reachable or the network which you have mentioned may not be known or not able to be identified by the routers or the host was unknown. Then in case of the path in which the particular path datagram is trying to move is having a lot of congestion, that information will be shared to the source saying that there is a lot of congestion in that particular path. So please try to stop sending or slow down the sending of your data. Or in case if you have something like I want to mention a particular route saying that this particular route is not available now. Sometimes what happens is in our IPv4 header also we discussed that there is a field called time to leave which will be decremented every time when we move from one node to other. Sometimes before we reach to the destination, the time to leave value becomes zero and we receive an error message called 11 comma zero. And another type of error is bad IP header. Well, just let us try to understand one of the what's ping command and how it is used. So here to understand the functionality of the ping command and echo request and reply, let me just go to the command prompt window and try to show you. As I shown you earlier, what's my IP address? You can go for the network and look at the properties. So here I could find the IP address to which I'm connected is 192.168.0.1. So whether I'm receiving packets or not, I would like to use the command dot to do dot. dot. 0 0.103 is my IP address. This is the command prompt. I'm trying to use a command called ping the IP address. Now here you could find that I got a reply from the my internet server that I have been connected. The bytes have been exchanged. The delay in the transmission is less than one millisecond and time to leave. So still 
128. So all the four packets which are sent are received by me and I'm calculating my approximate round trip time. So this the request which I've sent is called echo request and the response which I got from it is called as echo reply. This is an example for echo request and echo reply. Give me a minute. So as I mentioned, one of the errors which you could find in the case of uh, ICMP is your TTL getting expired and you get a message saying that your TTL got expired. Other case, when a router discards a datagram, then it will send an ICMP message with type 11 code 0 indicating the TTL is expired. So it also includes the router which has discarded that particular datagram. Similarly, if we our re, the destination which we have mentioned is unreachable or uh, the destination network is unreachable, all those things will be conveyed through the ICMP message. And then once the source receives it, it needs to take the corrective action as per the requirement. And let me discuss the last topic uh, in our, this particular chapter, which is called as Internet Protocol version 6. As mentioned earlier, the major reason for moving from IPv4 to IPv6 is the limitation on total number of available addresses in IPv4, which is a 32-bit address field. So total addresses available are only 2 per 32, which will be soon will be falling short of the demand. So to overcome this problem, we are trying to move to IPv6 address, which is having a length of 128 bits. So with this, you can have a total length of total number of available addresses, which we call it as address space as 2 power 128. So when your address space is 2 power 128, you, not, you can assign IP address as many as every bit of a smash sand also can be given an IP address. So that is what the bulk of IP addresses which can be available when we try to switch from IPv4 to IPv6. The second important thing that motivation for moving us from IPv4 to V6 is Compared to IPv4 header, the number of uh, fields which are available in the IPv6 header are comparatively less. And because of this, the processing and forwarding speed will be much higher than IPv4. And also, it is helping us to improve the quality of service. So in our previous classes, we tried to understand in IPv4 header format, we have two types of lengths. One is called fixed length without options, which is 20 head. So IPv4 header without options is 20 bytes and IPv4 header with maximum options available is 60 bytes. It depends on the whether we are including options or not. So but in case of uh, IPv6, the length of the header is fixed and that is 40 bytes. And also in IPv4, we could find that there is a process called fragmentation when the length of data gram is greater than maximum transmission unit of a frame. So whenever the length of datagram is greater than maximum transmission unit length of a frame, we are going for fragmentation. But in case of uh, IPv6, if your length of datagram is greater than maximum transmission unit of the frame, it will simply discard the datagram, but it will not go for the process called fragmentation. So these are few of the things we need to understand before uh, we go further into the detailed understanding of IPv6. So larger address space, better quality of service, less number of fields in the header format, and also there is no fragmentation allowed in the IPv6. Now let us look at the IPv6 header format. So IPv6 header format consists of different fields. So here also we have a version field indicating that the current version which we are using is IPv6. So the value of this 4-bit field is 0110 indicating the current version which we are using in IPv6 is version 6. The next 4 bits field is called priority field which is trying to indicate whether the services which we are expecting in IPv6 is a normal service or we find an, any priority requisitions. 
what are the different priority requirements we have or where we are expecting the datagram to have least delay or we are ensuring that the data does not find any error or the data is if it is containing some uh, what we say confidential data we are expecting a high level of security for those datagrams so all those special requirements will be mentioned by the priority field of the ipv6 datagram and according to that whether a special flow is required or not uh, will be mentioned in your 20 bit field called as flow label so version is of length 4 bits priority is of 8 bits and remaining 20 bits in the first row is referred as flow label so next field is called payload length which is trying to indicate the total length of the data of data graph ipv6 data graph so here header length is 40 bytes so the total data gram length minus 40 bytes will give you the payload length the total data gram length minus 40 bytes of header will give us the payload length the next header refers to the the transport layer protocol to which we are trying to forward this particular data gram it may be a tcp or it may be a udp or some other transport layer protocol that will be mentioned by the next header this is a 8 bits the hop limit is similar to the time to leave field in your ipv4 so it's a value which gets decremented every time we move from one node to other for instance if we are at no this particular node the time to leave value of 4 when you reach router 1 its value decrements by one value when you next move to r2 it gets decremented by one more value for instance if you are at destination e and in between if you are hop limit value reaches to zero your uh, datagram will not be able to reach to the destination this error will be informed by the router r1 r4 to the source a saying that your ttl is shortage of reaching to the destination accordingly the source need to uh, edit the value of its ttl the next fields which you have in ipv6 header are the source ip address which is of length 128 bits remember each row is of length 32 bits so here source address will be having totally four rows with each row of 32 bits so 128 bits of source ip address which is the address of the source which is actually transmitting the data graph similarly the destination to whom we are trying to transmit is also 128 bits and here how we have going to represent is the 32 32 32 bits will be grouped together and totally we'll have four bytes of uh, four groups of representations okay the last field in your ipv6 header is the data which you would like to transmit to the destination through this particular data graph so let me put a few comparison aspects from ipv4 and ipv6 ipv4 is of length 32 bits ipv6 is of 128 bits then ipv4 we have more header fields ipv6 we have comparatively less header fields so the processing speed is a bit more fragmentation is allowed in ipv4 so we have the values like identification number more flags and uh, do not fragment fragmentation offset in ipv4 which are not involved in the ipv6 because there is no fragmentation so the next header in case of ipv6 is equal to the protocol field in your ipv4 there you have the length which is the total datagram length here we are going to have inclusion of payload length the time to leave field in the ipv4 is represented as hop limit in case of ipv6 the source IP address there was 32 bits. Here it is 128 bits. Similarly, the destination address, which is 32 bits in the case of IPv4, is 128 bits in case of IPv6. So these are the few comparisons which we have in case of IPv4 and IPv6. And also, here we are not going an uh, implementation of checksum because in IPv6 believes that 
the error detection and correction of the jobs of the network uh, transport layer or data link layer. So if those particular column is also not included in case of IP physics, we don't have fragmentation. We don't have checksum implemented because it believes it will be taken care by some other layer in the network. Because of all this reduction, you could find an improvement in the processing speed. So checksum is removed entirely to reduce the processing time. The options which you have in case of uh, IPv4 is also being eliminated in case of IPv6, though they are being allowed as a next header columns. And also the ICMP version in IPv4 is different from the ICMP version used in IPv6 and very for that ICMP version at ICMPv6. Okay, so these are the modifications or the differences between the IPv4 header and the IPv6 header, which is one of the important concepts. Now, for instance, I want to move, I've been currently using from IPv4 and I would like to move to the IPv6. How do I do this transition? So we have two basic techniques called as dual stack and tunneling. Dual stack is a technique in which all the devices which you have, have the older versions called IPv4. At the same time, these devices are compatible to the newer versions called IPv6. Depending on the datagram or the destination to whom we need to send the data, it can adopt v4 or v6. So the devices are compatible to the both the versions. We call those kind of transition mechanisms as dual stack. Now coming to the second mechanism called tunneling, what is happening is maybe the source and the destination are using the IPv6 versions, but in between routers may not be able to carry that IPv6 format. So this kind of scenarios, the IPv6 content that has to be transmitted, the total IPv6 datagram will be inserted inside an IPv4 datagram. And the data of IPv4 is nothing but the total datagram of IPv6. So IPv6 is carried as a payload in IPv4 in case of tunneling. So let us look at the simple example. Here you have source A, which is using an IPv6 version and it has to transmit the destination F, which is also using IPv6. This is how we have been able to view logically. A has to send the data to B and through the tunnel it reaches to E and finally from E the data reaches to F. But in actual, in between, that is in tunnel, what is happening is we will have a series of routers like C and D which are using still IPv4 version. So what is required is, so first A starts an IPv6 datagram indicating source is A and destination is F and the flow type is no prioritization is required. Now this is forwarded to source B indicating flow is normal, source is A, destination is F. But what is happening is B is not directly connected to E, it has to transmit through C which is in a IPv4 format. So what happens is this entire IPv6 datagram is inserted into an to C as if that particular datagram is a data component of IPv4. So this total IPv6 datagram is inserted inside an IPv4 as a data. So here you could find a transition from IPv6 to IPv4. C forwards this data to D, which is again in IPv4. But from D, it has to reach to E, which is again in V6 format. So what happens is here, the data will be received to destination device E, indicating, but inside you know that E is not the final destination, F is the final destination. So B is actually forwarding it to E, and E is understanding that this datagram is actually intended for destination F and it is in IPv6 format. And so it removes the data from the IPv4 datagram and tries to forward this IPv6 datagram to destination F. So here you could find a transition from IPv6 to IPv4 and from D to E you would find there's a transition from IPv4 to IPv6. This process is called tunneling process. So this is what we have and the syllabus of Unit number three, network layer. Okay, 
So in this class, we try to understand address aggregation. Then we try to understand what is a network address translation and its significance. Then we try to understand an important protocol of network layer called ICMP. In the last, we try to discuss an advanced version of internet protocol called IPv6. And how do we transit from IPv4 to IPv6? I believe all these topics are simple and definitely you have to go through it because they are practical. When we understand this practically, this could be very useful in your real time. Meet you in the next class. Thank you.